Take a look at this cluster of stars behind me. Have you ever seen it in the night sky? If you have, you're not alone. Ancient cultures were obsessed with it, but there's more to it than meets the eye. And with modern cameras, we can reveal hidden details that surround this object. So I'm gonna take several photos of this region of space, zooming in after each shot, so we can see what those hidden details look like and reveal more than what human eyes could ever see. And I've got my camera and lens here, so let's go take our first shot of it and see what we get. And each time I take a photo, I'm gonna be using bigger and bigger gear. I also wanna talk about just how important this star cluster has been throughout history. And I guarantee you some of this stuff is gonna blow your mind. But before we do that, let's take a look at this first photo. Our starting point shows us where the star cluster is in the sky in relation to other popular constellations. Here you can see Aries, Perseus, and Taurus the bull. You know, the ferocious and ravenous creature with its gaze that strikes terror and fear into any unlucky soul to cross its path. This bright object you see is the planet Jupiter, and unlike the stars, it moves across the sky and changes its position every single night. In fact, the word planet actually comes from an ancient Greek word that literally translates to wanderer. Our little star cluster is on the bull's shoulder, and it's a group of massive, hot blue colored stars, which we call the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. To the naked eye, we can only see about six of these stars, so why do we call it the Seven Sisters? Well, we'll dive into that a little later. But first, let's quickly talk about how I'll be zooming in. Imagine drawing a circle around the entire sky, even the part below the horizon. That circle you've drawn around the globe is 360 degrees. Now, if you're standing out in a field and you can see from one horizon to the other, that is 180 degrees. Each photo captures a certain amount of the sky, and we call this the field of view. In order to zoom in, I need to change what's called the focal length number of the camera's lens. The bigger the number, the closer I get. Now the photo I took was taken with a Fuji X-T4 camera and an 11 millimeter lens, which makes the field of view about 94 by 71 degrees. For context, if you make the hang loose symbol and hold it out at arm's length, that takes up about 25 degrees of the sky. The full moon is about a half a degree. So what happens if, instead of using an 11 millimeter lens, I use a focal length that's five times bigger? Using a 55 millimeter lens, I'm able to get a field of view of about 24 by 16 degrees, which looks like this. Suddenly, we're able to see some interesting details that we couldn't see before. Look at these strange, wispy streaks. What you're looking at is a massive collection of interstellar dust with a small portion of it glowing bright blue, affected by the stars of the Pleiades. But what I find even more fascinating is how the Pleiades still affect us today, even though we might not realize it. Let me explain what I mean. So imagine there's no technology on Earth. How would you know what day, month, or even time of year it was? Oi, do you know what day it is? Shut up, get back to work. Aww. There's no cell phone or watch or calendar where you could look it up. Our distant ancestors used to live like this every single day. And unlike modern humans, they were able to tell what season it was just by looking up at the stars. This is because the night sky is constantly changing and certain stars are only visible during certain seasons. The stars in Scorpio shine high in the sky during the summer while Orion takes over in the wintertime. In the late fall, it's the Pleiades that grabs your attention. As this cluster appeared in the night sky, it marked the transition from the warmth and growth of spring and summer into the cold, dark times of winter. For us today, we really don't need to know this stuff anymore because technology has advanced so far ahead. But for your and my ancestors, knowing what stars were up was a matter of life and death. Think about it, we literally would not be here if they weren't able to read the stars. If you planted your crops at the wrong time or started hunting a certain animal at the wrong season, you would starve to death. The Pleiades was the most significant marker for the changing seasons, and it's still relevant today. We'll get to that, but for now, take a look at that photo again, because I did something different with this one that I didn't do with the previous photo. You see, to capture this image, I left the camera shutter open for two minutes to be able to collect all of that faint light and detail that our eyes normally couldn't pick up. But like the sun and moon, the stars are constantly moving across the night sky. So how can I leave the shutter open for so long without seeing the stars move in my image? Well, I used a specific piece of gear called a star tracker, and let me show you what it does. Take a look at this time lapse. Here you can see the stars moving in their normal direction across the night sky. But watch what happens when I turn the star tracker on. 
all of a sudden the stars are now stationary, allowing me to photograph them without getting those star streaks. Also, this is how you get those cool Earth rotation time lapses. Take a look at the ground moving. How cool is that? So now that we can track the stars, we can make a big jump in our ability to zoom in. And this time we're going from 55 millimeters to 250 millimeters of focal length. With this image, we've zoomed in from 24 by 16 degrees all the way to 5.5 by 3.5 degrees. Take a look at the area the Pleiades is illuminating. We can start to see the definition in the dust that reflects the glowing blue light from the star cluster. By the way, if you've ever wanted to learn how to take photos like this, I teach astrophotography, and you can learn more about it by joining my newsletter. I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, now, have you ever wondered why we celebrate Halloween? Random question, I know, but I promise you it relates to what we're talking about. Most people assume there's no real significance to this holiday, which also happens to be one of my favorite holidays. Take, for example, this 2010 article from Parade Magazine talking about Halloween. Is there any other day we celebrate that is as empty of moral or historical significance? Takes like this couldn't be further from the truth, and let me tell you why. We talked about how this beautiful star cluster was a symbol of change for ancient cultures, going from seasons of abundance and growth to seasons of darkness and death. These cultures used the Pleiades as a guide, telling them when change was coming in, in turn created rituals and ceremonies to honor this transition from life to death. A festival, you could say. A festival of the dead. Think about it, Halloween, Samhain, All Souls Day, Dia de los Muertos, Aztec and Mayan harvest festivals, even ancient Egyptian rituals all occurred around the same time. And that's just naming a few of them. But how do we know that these were connected to the Pleiades? In The Festival of the Dead by R.G. Halliburton, he talks about how all of these cultures celebrated a similar festival around the same time. The uniformity could not have been caused or preserved by any known calendar to us. The festival must have originally been regulated by some visible sign or mark that nature had supplied to our ancestors. Suspecting that the rising of some constellation must have been the guide by which this festival was regulated, I turned my attention to the Pleiades. Take for example Samhain, which is what Halloween is derived from, it's a druid festival of the dead, and it's celebrated when the Pleiades is at its highest point at midnight. Or if you take a look at the Aztecs, who were a bit more brutal with their festivals, they would sacrifice a human being when the Pleiades culminated at midnight or were at their highest point. But what I find even more fascinating is a lot of these cultures that celebrate a day of the dead had supposedly no contact with one another, yet they used the Pleiades as their guide. The details of that stuff deserve their own separate discussion. And speaking of detail, this next level of zoom is gonna reveal detail that will blow your mind. This beautiful image is from a telescope that has a focal length of 417 millimeters, giving us a field of view of two by three degrees, and is the result of many, many photos stacked together. This is why stacking multiple high magnification images is so important. It lets you capture details that other equipment would miss, but it gets even better. Lurking in the shadows of this image is a distant galaxy called UGC 2838. The Pleiades is relatively close at a distance of 444 light years. This galaxy sits at a mind boggling distance of 300 million light years away from us. Photos like this show us just how many stars are in the Pleiades, but with our eye holes, we can really only see six stars. Even the logo for Subaru, which is based on the Pleiades, only shows six stars. So if we can only see six of them, why do we call it the Seven Sisters? In Greek mythology, the seven daughters of Atlas, you know, the guy holding up the world, were placed in the sky by Zeus to protect them from Orion, who was really into them. However, one of those sisters fell in love with a mortal man and went into hiding which is why we only see six stars. But here's where it gets interesting. Let's travel across the world to a place that, as far as we know, had no contact with Western civilization until about the 1600s, Australia. Right. They have an oddly similar story about this star cluster. In many Australian Aboriginal cultures, the Pleiades are a group of young girls. Their version of Orion chased after these seven girls, and one of them was eventually captured leaving six remaining stars. Isn't it strange that two completely separate cultures had a story about a missing star in the Pleiades? 
Now check this out. The story about the lost seventh star seems to be a common story around the world, including the mythologies of cultures in Africa, Asia, Native America, and other places in Europe. So how is it that all of these stories are so similar? Is there something connecting them all? Well, the tale of the Pleiades may just be the oldest story ever told. But before we talk about that, let's zoom in even closer on the Pleiades. And this time we're gonna be using a massive telescope. What you're looking at here is a photo with a field of view of just under one half degree by 0.7 degrees wide. It's so narrow that you would struggle to fit the full moon in this field of view. Of the six stars you can see with your naked eye, only three of them are visible in this photo. This photo was taken using a massive telescope that has a focal length of nearly 3,000 millimeters. For context, here's the size of the telescope that was 417 millimeters in focal length. And here's my wife standing next to the telescope that has nearly 3,000 millimeters. Getting this close to the Pleiades gives us a better understanding of what we're really looking at when we see it in the night sky, but it also makes it really easy to get lost in the details. So let's zoom out back to where we started, gazing up at the Pleiades, that same star cluster that our ancestors saw in the night sky. At least, that's what we'd assume. And this is where we come back to the mystery of the missing star in the Pleiades. We mentioned that the story of the Seven Sisters is shockingly similar in cultures all over the world. Well, what if I told you that the story of the Pleiades is so similar because it was a story that was told before humans even reached those places? Current evidence points to modern humans originating from this part of the globe before they started traveling to other parts of the world. This migration is said to have happened between 70 and 100,000 years ago. This means that the story of the Pleiades would have to be older than that. And as humans migrated towards the far reaches of the globe, they carried the story of the Seven Sisters with them. But how can we know that this tale goes that far back? The recent mission from the Gaia Space Telescope has revealed something fascinating. The stars in the Pleiades aren't fixed. They're slowly shifting in their positions over time. Right now, the star Pleion is so close to the star Atlas that, to our eyes, they look like a single star. But here's the cool part. If we turn back time 100,000 years, Pleione was farther from Atlas and easy to spot as its own star. Back then, people gazing up at the night sky would have clearly seen seven stars in the Pleiades cluster. At some point, many tens of thousands of years ago, as the stars moved closer together, there must have been a moment where Pleione seemed to have vanished from view. Imagine what that must have been like for our ancient ancestors. Knowledge of the sky was a matter of life and death, and this prominent star cluster that you relied on that always had seven stars, all of a sudden had one of them disappear. That must have been pretty strange to them, and you can see it with all of these stories that got updated, talking about one of them going missing, or burning out, or falling out of the sky. More magnification doesn't always mean better. Each level of zoom serves a purpose. The wide shots give you context to what you're looking at, while the close-up photos help us better understand exactly what these things in the sky are. We know more about this star cluster than our ancient ancestors ever did, yet we still see it in the sky and look at it with fascination. In fact, the fascination with the Pleiades is still alive and well today. If you go on social media, you can see tons of people posting photos taken with their cell phone of this star cluster, asking, what is this thing? So much so that there's an entire subreddit dedicated to it called It's Always Pleiades. If you're curious about some of the gear I use to take the photos I showed in this video, or if you want to read the paper that talks about the Pleiades being 100,000 years old, I'll link them in the description below so you can check them out. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, keep looking up, and I'll see you all next time.